my like question is uh, maybe there are two in fact uh first one is uh i have a like uh i have flake uh nick flake.nix and flake.log uploaded uh, in uh, a github repo uh, i downloaded the repo i do flake update on this and it generates a different log file what do i do with that and it does not work unfortunately um so yeah next next flake update does kind of regenerate the log file is did you want to update the log file or what is the intention of like that you're trying to get at? Uh, the intention I'm trying to uh, to fulfill here is uh, to update one of the libraries that. Uh, ah. Uh, so you want to update just just one dependency and not like all of them? Yes, but on the other hand, I thought that when you have a log file which is. Uh, up to date uh, so updated uh, it is a better practice than not having that um yeah uh well we're just going to michelle here uh so you can uh, i think if you look at the so by the way man pages uh, if you just do next like i think that gives you the next man page if you want the next like man page need to be next three like um and so here uh lock uh is there next flake i think this doesn't work no that doesn't work i think it needs to be this yes um next flake lock uh so this i guess you updated uh you ran well next flake lock is next flake update update yeah like update. Uh, so this uh, updates the flag lock file, right? Um, there is the. Oh, oh, right, flake. That there is a update input. I'm pretty sure there, there's a flag to update just a single one. Next flag lock update input, I think. Where is that? Man, next three flag lock update input. OK, so apparently it's it's just in the next flag lock and not in the next flag update. So I guess next flag update updates all the things all the time. Next, like lock update input updates is, can update single ones. Um, so I guess this uh, does this answer part of your question? That uh, yes, the part where I want to update the particular uh, dependency uh, of uh, my flag, but then th the question about the good practice remains. Yeah, but like whether you want to like always have the flag lock up to date right yeah um so i i think it's it's good to all yeah i think it's good to always have an up to date uh, flag lock um and as as long as you make sure to commit these updates to the uh to the repository and and have ci run on those um and make sure they they still build and if you get failures, you you can you try to fix them. Uh, then I think it's it's great. Um, but if you have a a project that rarely updates or that that's like an archive of sorts that you just want to keep working forever the same it it does right now and not have any maintenance effort, then I think it's better to just keep it the same as it is all the time. Um, so it's. I mean, the flag lock just allows you to pin inputs, and uh, you can update those, and that requires some some effort. Or you can you can keep it the same, which means you get outdated stuff, perhaps. Also, security uh, might be something uh, to keep in mind. Uh, if you use old versions of things, you might have security vulnerabilities in those. Uh, most recently, Open SSL. Um, there, there's been OpenSSL issues with 
so if you if you run a Nexus system, I'd probably recommend updating OpenSSL now. Um, but yeah, does this answer the question a bit uh, a bit better? It's there's really no like clear. It it depends. I'd say really, there's no oh. like okay. always I update it or always leave it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think I will try to do this lock with update a single dependency because that's, uh, as you said, it's like more like an archive than living project. Mm. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, about the the open SSL, we might be able to check here. So I, I think I'm on latest master here. Let us check for the. Open as a cell version here. Instantiate some um, using mix instantiate eval. Uh, Going to evaluate the attribute open as a cell dot version to get to look at the version. And this is three o seven. I think that might still be vulnerable. No, it's the fixed one. Oh, it's the fixed one. Awesome. Uh, oh yeah, let's also take a look at the the, the history here. Um, so, well, git log, but this is a bit a bit too much. We can use git log for a specific file. Uh, we don't know where the open SSL file is. Uh, one way there's nix edit, which allows you to edit a specific uh, attribute. In, uh, in in a set. I think if we just do add next add next packages open SSL, this uses the next registry. So it looks up the next packages in the next registry, which points to GitHub, NixOS, next packages. Um, it, it clones that, the latest master version, and then it opens the, the file here. Um, this is good if you. What happens? Yeah. What happens between cloning and opening the file at this line? I suspect that it's the same magic which is used on search nixos org. But how does it trace it down to the specific line? How does that work? Um, yeah. So so going from that, I mean, start nix registry. We can look at the registry here. Uh, it's oh. documented here. It has uh, various sources. Uh, the global Wait. registry comes from here. I know how register works. It just looks up that Nix packages is a well-known name pointing at the main Nix packages repository. Exactly, yeah. And so how we, does it we go? get to that? All right. So we so we get the flag reference. Um, in the end, it will have to import the cloned thing into the store at some point, and for that, it should remove the the dot git directories and such. And I think actually Git has a built-in way to create these things. I'm not sure if Nick relies on this. Git has the um, archive, git archive command, uh, where you can uh, create an archive uh, containing this tree structure. Uh, yes. No, I still didn't know how it doesn't even find the right file, let alone the right file name. Oh, the right name. file. I, I can tell you about how they how it finds the right file, yeah. Um, right, so how does it get to, to the OpenSSL file? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, what it does underneath is, uh, so let's import next packages here. Uh, go in, go open SSL. And this has the meta.position. Meta.position. That's really all it does. Well, that's the attribute Nix accesses underneath. This contains both the file and the, the exact line number. Well, the line number, it's what is that? Special to the meta block, right? Yes, that's special to the to the how meta is handled in Nix packages. Um, Let's also look at what exactly it points to. Line one seven nine points to the description, and so what it does underneath, how Meta works underneath, and how it gets the 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 line uh, it does built-ins dot unsafe 
get attribute class. This takes one argument, which is the attribute name. You want to get the, the file location for. And the second is the attribute set that you want to get it under. So here we can go nssl.meta.description. Um, other way around. Oh, no, it's, I think I got it right. Like this. Yeah, so it, it really does this underneath. This is one of the few ways in which Nix allows you to get like a, a kind of impure result, but it's very useful for, for error messages and things like so this. So when Nix is evaluating something, it not only builds uh, data structures, but also those traces when they are defined, right? Um, you mean potentially slow? <laughs> uh, yeah, it it does track the position info of of a lot of things, but it has to do that anyways to get good error messages. The error messages need to kind of point to the location where they happen, and uh, I don't okay. think it has a big performance impact. But yes, it, it it's certainly not not uh, free. Uh, unfortunately, here. Yeah. Since we get derailed anyway, can you do the same with the flake? Like, again, get the position of description in OpenSSL meta, but uh, well, not with, with the flake. Yeah, yeah. So, like the LF, like load flake, REPL command, then. Mm -hmm. um, I guess next packages, nice. And then OpenSSL uh, meta position. Oh, uh, right. Outputs dot uh, legacy packages dot open SSL dot uh, meta dot position does work. Okay. Nice and similarly. Right. Built in dot unsafe that attribute pass should also work if I remember correctly. Do this, yeah, that also works. Cool, thank you. Yeah, um, of course, because it's a flag, uh, the next code is in a store path. Uh, notably, here we see that unsafe get Azure pass has like more information and, and also it's structured information, whereas the meta position kind of mangles this into like single string. Also gets rid of the column. Um, a bit unfortunate, but a uh, Nix underneath, I think, just parses this string. Uh, honestly, like, it might mess up if the file name contains a, a colon here. Should we try that? That sounds like fun, actually. <laughs> we, we could try. Um, I mean, yeah, let's, let's try this. Let's create a new package, just in general, and see how the pattern for that is. That's one of the most common things people do for next packages. Uh, so in next packages, we have the packages directory containing all the packages. Uh, we have a kind of ad hoc folder structure here, which is semi, it's semi uh, regular. There's, there's not a lot of structure, but uh, if you find any nice category where it fits in, you can use that. But don't worry about making it exact. Uh, in here, there's uh, subcategories. Um, yeah. Um, and so if you if you need to create a new package, uh, right, let's go into here. Let's pick applications or say MISC. And yeah, MISC apparently here. Files are on their own. Uh, let's say test package. So we make a directory in here for our package. Uh, in this directory, we create a default.next file so we can import it straight away since default.next is the default next file. Now we create the, the dependencies uh, that our program has. Uh, one of the most standard ones is standard env. Standard env provides stdenv.make derivation. Uh, let's give it a name. That's always required. Uh, as package, we give it uh, some, uh, let's say, native build inputs. Let's do, let's say, JQ. 
So we want to use JQ at build time. Let's then set a build, uh, not build, build phase. Uh, usually this would, or by default, this was, would call make, uh, just make, uh, but we don't have a make file, so this wouldn't really do anything. So instead, let's set our own build phase. Um, if you overwrite the build phase, uh, a good convention is to uh, run the pre-build and the post-build hooks. This way, people will be able to let me comment this uh, by running the hooks uh, dot override patches and then free build equals blah 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 works. Um, yeah, so generally good thing. So we people that, that's kind of a normal thing to to want to do. And so in here, let's then do uh, JQ. We pass it N for it. It doesn't take any input. We uh, let's say we create some some results. Ten. Write this to out. Um, let's say we don't have an install phase for now. Or just don't install a thing. Let's try it out. Oh, uh, well, yeah, uh, trying it out. So next thing uh, we need to, we have this default here now. Uh, we go back to packages and then into top level all packages. This is a huge file that you can't even look into GitHub, uh, look at in GitHub right now. And here, so challenge, find a good place to put the package. It, it doesn't matter a whole bunch in the end, but to avoid merge conflicts, I'd argue just search for some ledgers that look similar, maybe also by category. Uh, here, for example, we, we put in into MISC. I'll search for MISC here, see okay, there's some MISC here, sure. And then let's go to about T, which is, Oh, we are back to A. That's great. T, there's some T's here. It's R, S, T. OK, let's put it here. Test package. And so then we, we do the call package pattern here. Uh, we, we go up one level. We go to misc. We go to test package. Uh, we don't need to set default on next because this is the default. Uh, in the argument here, we can override individual packages. So we could, for example, say JQ could be on the alternative version of JQ if there was one. Uh, don't need that here, though. Um, yeah, this is all you need to be able to test the package. Uh, so then you can go to the root directory, run a nix build a test package, and it will try to build the package. Ooh, yep. Okay, now we get we don't have a source by default. Make derivation expects a source. Let's go back to the test package. Let's set um also let's change stdf.make derivation to just uh, run command. Run command is just a very simple uh, a very simple builder that just takes a single command to run. In this case, we really only need this. Uh, it takes three arguments. First is the package name. The second is the, the derivation attributes. And here we can set the native build inputs. And the third argument, as is done here, this is the script to run. Uh, the run command, I don't think, cares much about phases. Uh, if it does, it should handle this internally. So we can get rid of this. And try it again. Gonna run it in here now. Next build I test package. 
OK, that worked. So now let's try the thing I, I wanted to do here. Uh, well, first, let's try the, the meta.position, see if it's, if it's there. So we next REPL. Uh, let's load the current directory into this. Test package meta dot position. That does not work correctly. It points to the run command actually. If you go in here, eighty one points to here. A run command with. Um. Okay, so what if we overwrite the meta? Because previously it got the position from the meta description attribute. So what if we set this and try it again? That worked. Awesome. So apparently fall back to uh, to, to the underlying builder perhaps. Um, but yeah, now let's let's see. We can next edit this uh, dot. Uh, hash uh, test package. Oh, and it's going to import the. So this is currently a problem. It's going to import the entirety of Nix packages into the store. Uh, this will be fixed in the future Nix update, though. Um, and we get the. This will also be fixed. This error is really bad right now with flakes. Uh, if you get no such file or directory, generally you need to add this. A directory to git. This uh, next only contains the things tracked by git or next flags rather. So edit this. Um, let's try it again. Okay, that works. Now let's try what happens if we mess with the file name. Let's move test package to test colon package. All right, and let's update top level all packages. Test package to test colon package. Now, the as you can see, the syntax highlighting breaks here. I don't think this is a valid path. Um, we can, however, uh, do we can say dot dot and then plus this. That should work. Uh, so path appending is interesting in Nix and a bit weird. It uh, well, let's try it out first. Let's go Nix Nix edit test package. Yeah, now uh, oh no, we haven't committed it yet. Git add. We haven't uh, get added it yet. Let's add it. Oh, that still works. So the, the parsing code is apparently resilient to, to that. That's nice. But yeah, it would contain a colon here. Um, but yeah, test package. Uh, oh, yeah, I wanted to show the all packages, test package, uh, this kind of thing. So, so paths in Nix are something are interesting in, in many ways. We uh, quick demo here. So some paths, uh, just dot slash dot. Uh, paths always need a slash in them. And uh, by the uh, well, they always expand to absolute paths. Uh, where they're relative to the current uh, directory you're in or the current file that you're in uh, right now. Uh, you can also make absolute paths. However, they aren't super common because you generally don't want things to be specific on where you currently are. So by default, they're well, always they they're expand to absolute paths. You can append things here using just string concatenation. Uh, so we can say, let's go into the lib directory here. And that does work. Um, however, note that 
if you just uh, nix does path kind of normalization every time you append strings. And so if you just add a slash, the slash isn't actually there because it takes this and normalizes it again, uh, which just removes the slash. So if you do this, this wouldn't work. This gives a an invalid valid result. This also hints at the operator precedence here because Nix underneath does this. It first appends the absolute path to the, yeah, it's in this order. If it was the other way around like this, that does work. But at that point, we, we might as well do this. Um, alternatively, uh, you might try to do this to increase this a bit. Uh, oh, uh, this, but this is, as you'll notice, something different because it imports the entire dot slash dot directory into the next store and returns a store path. Um, you can avoid store imports and strings by adding the by using the two string uh, built in. This just turns it into the into the the literal string where it points to. Um, so in general, absolute path and this is a path data type. If you want a string from that, it's this. Um, so paths. Uh, well, let me show you something else about paths that's a bit weird and might surprise you. Uh, if we take some path, uh, we, or let's say we take some path, we go into a directory, we go out of that directory, it removes this part. So Nix removes these, these dot dots if it can. Um, Oh, it removes them always. It turns it into an absolute path. And this is not entirely correct behavior uh, if lib is a symlink. Uh, in, in typically, so real uh, real path is a utility on, on Linux that you can use to resolve a path. And so if you do this here, uh, gives the same result, uh, but that's because it looks it checks what lib is. Let's say we had a symlink here. Uh, let's say we have uh, lib symlink pointing to, uh, let's say, packages applications. Did I make that right? Yes. So lib symlink pointing at packages applications. And now if we do real path, uh, well, lib symlink, it's it's going to return this. It's not the current directory anymore because it goes into that uh, into that symlink and then does the dot dot. So it does the expansion here, goes into packages uh, applications, then it becomes this, and then it uh, removes this component. Um, Next, however, doesn't do this. So if we do Nix uh, lib symlink dot dot that that's just the current directory next doesn't read this file at all uh, th there is some built-in support to read files and directories in nix um, this is for one built-in stuff read there this allows you to get a listing of all the uh, the entries in the current directory uh, along with what their type is it's a directory a a symlink or a regular file. Um, we can also read individual files, uh, read file. So we can say, let's read the um, salt on next file. All right, just returns a string. Uh, in, in the next packages library, let's load this. Uh, let's pack this. Look, there is also, uh, is, is there a lib.read file? No, uh, but there is lib.import, oh, no. Oh, I, uh, read file, yeah, there is read file. I import the entire scope here. 
So there's read file, which is just an alias to the built-in, uh, but there's also read or import JSON, which both reads the file and does a built-in stuff from JSON on it, uh, which is sometimes a bit convenient. I'll see, is there a JSON file here? Uh, yes. Let's just try it out. Import JSON and this path. Again, so this returns the next value for the JSON in that file. Um, also, so next is both built-ins from JSON um, and to JSON. And that's uh, so JSON is actually the only type that Nix can both serialize and deserialize. As you can see, there's also from Tommel here, from Tommel, uh, but there's no to Tommel. Um, there's also to to XML, but there's no from XML. You don't need to Tommel if you have to JSON because it's supposed to be a superset. Uh, I think that's YAML. That's a superset. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, there, there is. Uh, so there is no serializers for uh, for these things in like built into Nix, uh, but there are serializers in Nix packages. Uh, one of them, or one part of it, is in lib generators. Uh, this is just right generates uh, formats from Nix data structures. Uh, we can go in here, take a look at some of these, uh, kind of a generic value string thing. Um, let's go to some more interesting ones. There's two ini, the, the ini file format uh, with some configuration options. There's uh, get ini, there's JSON, there's YAML. JSON, as you can see, just uses built-in stuff JSON. YAML here, that's the, YAML is a superset of JSON, so it just uses JSON instead to generate it. Um, recursion, that's something else. To pretty, I think we looked at this in a previous next hour, uh, generates a nicely printed value with optional new lines, plist, some, uh, Darwin stuff, uh, doll apparently as well. Nice. Um, that's one part. Another is the packages lib. I introduced this myself. The formats in here. So these are accessible with. Let's take a look. So we have uh, lib dot generators. They're all in here. Um, I think these all take an initial argument. Uh, but let's see. Yeah, they take an initial argument for configuration and then a second argument to generate. Um, so yeah, you can look at the, the individual functions here to see what they allow you to configure with the first argument. Um, we also have, so the, the other part is the packages.formats, that's in the packages lib I just wanted to show. Uh, here there are some, uh, so there are uh, also kind of the same ones in here to some degree, uh, but these are in most ways a bit more powerful. Let's for example, look at the YAML one. Uh, well, first let's look at lib.generators.toYAML. So this, uh, well, as we can see above there, um, it just generates a, it doesn't generate any new lines and it's just a JSON. That's kind of hard to read. Um, let's also print this here. Let's do trace, so you can see the output. Um, the packages.formats, um, so notably lib only, lib can't access any packages. So lib is entirely at evaluation time. It it cannot access any like pretty formatters or things like that. But if we don't, if we lift that restriction and that's what's done in packages.formats, we can uh, make it much nicer. 
And so how this works is that I think, again, you have a, the first argument is for configuration. And the second one, we can give the value. Oh, actually, no, that's not how it works. Uh, well, it works like this. Uh, YAML format, packages.yaml, formats.yaml. So we get this, this value here. And this then contains two main things. It contains a generate function. So we can do YAML format.generate. Uh, and so this doesn't generate just a string anymore because we are, if we want to lift as a restriction for evaluation time, we can't return the, the formatted thing at evaluation time anymore. Uh, so instead, we, we we need to give some name for it to generate a derivation. Um, so uh, name, and here's the value, a w dot c plus 10. So now it's actually going to return a derivation indeed. Uh, let us build this derivation. All right, let's look at the result. And as you can see, it contains like the, the properly formatted YAML uh, values. And all of these uh, formats try to make it a bit nicer. Uh, which is useful for, for Nexus or if you need it. Um, in addition to the generator, there's also format.type in here. So this is a Nexus or a, a module system option type, which you can then use for your options. Um, this has the, the nice property that it supports it's like the, it supports all the values YAML supports and that in a recursive way and in, and in a way where it does the merging correctly. Uh, let's quickly try. Um, so under modules, there's merge lib.modules.merge definitions. This is kind of the, the underlying primitive in the module system to merge together definitions uh, takes two arguments, I think. Uh, the first one is not that important. The second one, however, is the actual values of the, the types we want to merge together. Oh, no, it takes three. The second one is YAML format dot type. Takes a type, takes the values we want to merge together. Now let's say just null for now. And then it gives us um, let's look at the merged value. So the merged value of that is null. Uh, we can could also provide that multiple times. Notably, the make force here is also kind of taken care of. Um, let's do let's do like a nested thing. So a dot b dot c equals ten and from before. Oh, now we need to strictly print this. Um, and let's add another value. Value equals a dot b dot d equals 20. Yeah, and so it, it merges these together as you'd expect from the normal Nexus modules. And for types that YAML doesn't support, it's just going to Give an error. So if we add a function here, it's going to say, oh, actually, that's a different error, but we have a private file here. File. Blah, blah. Yeah, OK. Uh, anyways, the error is here. So it says uh, we have a definition that's not of type YAML value, and then it also prints uh, all the definitions that are problematic here. Yeah, uh, and so uh, anybody have a question about this? Otherwise, I'll just continue. I have a question not about this, but um, sure, anything. You, okay, you showed that read directory read file things, and before there were flakes, it was like, hey, this isn't pure. Don't use it. Don't rely on it. And when flakes came, 
I found out that they actually show like not what's on the file system, but what's in the flake. If you don't git add something, for example, it doesn't show up here. So yeah, and the first thing yeah. that I did when I was moving my config to flates was to write an auto importer so that I can point it to a directory and it gives me a list, a dictionary or a whatever of what's happening there. And I don't have to spell out every file in that directory in that other place of the config. How frowned upon, upon is this practice of having an auto importer? <laughs> That's a very common thing to, to have and to want. It's totally not frowned upon. And, and actually, I'm currently working on an RC to also do that in Next Packages itself, because uh, just the thing we looked at earlier, the yeah, all package yeah, yeah. file. That's, that's not something anybody would want to write in their own <laughs> repository. And so, yeah, very good thing. Uh, I think. I don't think there's an auto importing thing in in next package itself. Uh, we could take a look at it here. Uh, read there. No, there isn't anything. Well, there's list files recursive. Uh, no, there's no no auto importing thing. Uh, but yes, very good practice. Um, you also mentioned that uh, something about flakes and pure evaluation. Uh, so yeah, the Within flakes, I believe paths are re restricted to only uh, contain like the flake sub paths. So uh, let's see, can I reproduce this here? Uh, let's go to flake.next. I think in here, if we did like lib equals dot dot slash lib, I think that would give an error. Uh, let's try to make flake show. Would it give an error? Oh yeah, it gives an error. Uh, so yeah, right. Flakes imports the the, the Git file, the Git directory into the store, and then anything outside of that uh, is you, you don't have access to. And so also the um, right. So if you were to like built in dot read dear of dot dot, that would be out, of course. So yeah, that, that's that's something about to keep in mind regarding flex and pure evaluation, where not all readers work. Uh, you can only access the ones underneath the flake. Store path. Oh, store path is store path is an interesting thing uh, that notably doesn't work in flakes. Uh, let's take a quick look at this. Um, so let's say you build some package. So we build hello. We get the store path, and now we we for some reason have that store path somewhere and in in Nix, but only the store path. Uh, so let's say the path equals this string. Uh, but now if you if you're just in in a derivation, you you depend on this path. You do like a uh, the path plus bin hello, and try to build something from that. Um, let's actually try try this. So we go into uh, s two dot next. Uh, let's do this for now. Tacky, but uh, hello. Or let's do run command again. Test. We do native build inputs equals. Um, hello. Uh, actually, no, not hello. We're going to, well, let's do hello for now. And then we do hello to out. And that should work. And test 2.next. All right. Get result. So that works. Uh, but now if we do the, the store path, um, if I can get it back here. So we take the store path um, and just do this. I think this still works, actually. Let's try. It doesn't, no. OK. Uh, yeah, so this is um, 
if we look at the derivation itself, let's do it next instantiate plus two dot next. Actually, next show derivation on this, and then look at like the input DRVs. So these are the derivations that uh, we depend on, and it doesn't know about the hello derivation here, notably. Um, and Nix, uh, in Nix, it, for the builder sandbox, it creates a sandbox that only contains the derivations you depend on, which kind of ensures that you can't use any derivations that, right, that you haven't explicitly declared. Um, but in this case, this kind of gets in the way. Um, while I'd say it's an anti-pattern to want to do this, there is built-in start store path, which allows you to do that. Um, uh, it's also it's a string. Um, so let's try this, and that works again. Yeah. So built-in start store path turns a store path into the thing it represents in the store, essentially. Uh, if we look. Take a closer look here. I think it adds the string context to the store. So store path, it looks the same, but it has context. So string context is this thing that tracks dependencies in Nix. We can also explicitly get the context with built-in stop get context. On this string, we can see it doesn't have any, uh, but if we do the built-in store path, it does have context. And so this tells Nix that, oh, in order to use this string, we need this path to exist and be checked and stuff. Uh, what does string context all contain? It uh, not only contains the, uh, oh, this actually contains only the, the store path here. If we look at the dot dot, uh, it's only path, uh, typically, if you see string context, so let's look at um, hello dot out path. So this is the output path of hello of the hello derivation. If you look at this context, uh, we can see that it has the derivation, the hello derivation in here, and not the output path from here. And this is because you can have multiple outputs. In this case, Nix doesn't even know about the derivation that created this store path. It's it's really just a store path. Um, so this has the derivation, and this then also allows you to have dependencies on on multiple outputs. So let's say we look at the OpenSSL. This has many outputs. Um, notably, there's also the OpenSSL dot all, which is a list of all the derivations. Let's just do like a concat strings set and here. So we have a string containing all of these derivations. Now if we do built in stop that context on this, we get uh, all the individual outputs. So it doesn't just write it. It needs this to, to track all of the output paths that are needed. Um, there is also kind of related buildings that remove uh, unsafe discard. Well, there's discard string context. This is kind of the opposite or reverses what built in stuff store path did. Um, let's let's take this one here. Uh, unsafe discard string context, and now if we get context, uh, we don't get any context anymore. There is also unsafe discard output dependency. Uh, if we do this, unsafe discard output dependency. Now, oh, this is really slow. Ah. Oh. That's interesting. I didn't expect this. Oh, 
Yeah, this is for OpenSSL.DRV path. So if you just have DRV path, this also has a get context. Um, Oh, all outputs, that's also a thing. So it's it's a bit of a built-in uh, of an internal thing, apparently. I think this should work now, though, unsafe. Um, context, unsafe, discard output dependency. OK, yeah, that, that works. Um, a bit weird that this didn't work, but this does. Uh, I'd imagine this should be the same. But yeah, so this uh, is then only dependency on the derivation path itself, not the not the output of that. This is useful if you need to create some, some derivation that copies this derivation to another machine so it can be built on another machine there. Um, generally, that's, I'd say, better done with a remote builder. Uh, which I think is documented somewhere in config. Oops, .conf. Builders. Yeah. Remote builders kind of take care of that usually, but in, in some edge cases, you might need this. Uh, but yeah, it is, it is unsafe. The, the kind of context machinery is part of what makes Nix safe and, and allows it to do a lot of cool things, and if you don't do that, you might get the error we had before. I mean, even just even just doing this, I think, is an unsafe thing. Having referring to a next door path, uh, referring to a next door path in general, uh, if you as, as soon as you copy it outside of the next door or outside of and the next handling, and then literally have a store path. Uh, thing weird things can happen, especially especially with garbage collection and not depending on the right paths and things like that. So not recommended, but I guess this is kind of the next anomicon here. Uh, things you shouldn't do, but if you if you need them, they, they are there. All right, um, we are just about out of time. Um, I hope this this was helpful. Um, if you have other questions, we can also you can also ask them in the discourse. And uh, otherwise, yeah. See you next week. <laughs>